All right. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most incredible pieces of engineering in the known universe, and that's you. Seriously, we're diving into the brilliant architecture that lets you walk, run, jump, even just sit there listening to me. We're going to explore the absolute blueprint of how you move. I mean, have you ever really, truly stopped to think about it? It seems so simple, right? You decide to walk, and you just walk. But underneath, there's this beautiful, unbelievably complex dance going on between your bones, your muscles, and your nerves. It's a system so elegant that, honestly, we all take it for granted pretty much every second of the day. Okay, so first things first, let's bust a huge myth. The word skeleton actually comes from Greek for dried up body. And that gives us this, you know, this Halloween-y image of a dry, brittle, lifeless frame. But the reality? Oh, it's so much cooler than that. Your skeleton is a living, dynamic system. It's super strong, but also incredibly light. It's an absolute marvel. So here's our game plan for this explainer. We're going to walk through the five key parts of this whole architecture of action. We'll start with the framework, your skeleton. Then we'll look at the engine, your muscles. We'll zoom way into the microscopic powerhouse, see how it all connects at the joints, and then we'll look at how this whole system changes over your lifetime. All right, part one, the foundational structure. The best way to think about your skeleton is as the passive steel frame of your body. It's what provides that fundamental structure, what holds everything up and gives you your shape. I mean, let's be real. Without it, we'd all just be, well, slugs. But here's the thing. This frame does so much more than just stand there. It's also a bodyguard. Think about how your skull protects your brain. It's a system of levers that your muscles pull on to make you move. It's a mineral bank storing stuff like calcium. And believe it or not, it's a factory churning out blood cells deep inside the bone marrow. It's a serious multitask. And the design of each bone is all about form falls function. It's brilliant. We basically classify them into four groups. You've got long bones, like the femur in your leg. Then there are short, cube-shaped bones, like in your wrist. You have flat bones, like in your skull. And then there's everything else, the irregular bones, like your vertebrae. Each shape is a perfectly specialized tool for a very specific job. So if the skeleton is the frame, what makes it go? A frame can't move on its own, right? That brings us to the engine, your muscular system. These are the active machines of the body. Their whole job is to contract and pull on that skeletal framework to create all movement. And here's a fantastic little piece of trivia for you. Ever wonder where we got the word muscle? Well, way back when, a scientist thought that the ripple of a contracting bicep looked like a little mouse scurrying under the skin. And the Latin word for little mouse is mus. So yeah, muscle. I promise you, you'll never look at a bicep curl in the same way again. Now, when we say muscles, we usually think of the ones we control, the skeletal muscles. But your body has two other types that are total workhorses, running on autopilot. You've got the cardiac muscle in your heart and the smooth muscle that lines your organs. They work tirelessly, 24-7, without you ever having to give them a single thought. Now, to really, really understand how a muscle can generate so much force, we've got to go deeper. I mean, we need to zoom way, way in, down to the microscopic level, to find the secret powerhouse that's behind every single move you make. Okay, so say hello to the sarcomere. This little guy is the fundamental unit of your muscle. Your muscles are packed with millions upon millions of these tiny, tiny engines, all lined up perfectly, end to end. And when they all decide to shorten just a little bit, the entire muscle contracts with absolutely incredible force. So how do these little engines actually work? It's a process called the sliding filament theory. First, a signal from your nerves releases calcium. Now, think of calcium as the key that unlocks everything. It opens up binding sites on these thin filaments called actin. This allows the heads on the thick filaments, called myosin, to grab on, forming what we call a cross bridge. And then, step three, the power stroke. The myosin heads pivot and pull the actin filaments toward the center. Probably the best way to picture this is to imagine the myosin heads literally walking along the actin filaments. It's not one big pull. Instead, it's this series of tiny, super rapid steps happening all at once across millions of sarcomeres. And that's what generates the smooth, powerful contractions of your muscles. Okay, so let's zoom back out for a second. We've got our framework, the skeleton. We've got our engines, the muscles. 
But how do they actually connect to let you do anything? Well, that happens at the points of action, your joints. This is where the whole system comes together to make motion possible. The joints that let you move the most, think your knees, your shoulders, your hips, are called synovial joints. And their key feature is just brilliant engineering. They have this little cavity filled with synovial fluid. This fluid is like a super high-tech lubricant, letting your bones glide past each other almost without any friction at all. And again, the shape of the joint dictates what it can do. So a hinge joint, like in your elbow, works, well, like a door hinge. It basically just moves back and forth in one direction. But then you have a ball and socket joint, like your shoulder, and that's the whole shebang. It gives you this incredible range of motion in all directions, even rotation. It's a marvel of mobility. Okay. For our last section, let's bring all this information home and make it personal. Because here's the thing, your musculoskeletal system isn't static. It's a living, breathing architecture that you are constantly building, remodeling, and maintaining through your entire life. I mean, the journey of your skeleton is just fascinating. It actually starts out as flexible cartilage models when you're in the womb. Then, through childhood, special growth plates let your long bones get longer. By the time you're an adult, your bone is this dynamic tissue that's always remodeling itself based on the stress you put on it. And then, as we all get older, keeping that bone mass becomes absolutely critical. And this right here is why understanding our own architecture is just so, so vital. There's a disease called osteoporosis that can make bones dangerously fragile, and it affects a truly staggering number of people. Just how many? For women over the age of 65, the number is around 50%, one in two, that, that's huge. The danger becomes crystal clear when you see the two side by side. On the left, you've got healthy, dense, strong bone. But on the right, you can see that osteoporotic bone has become porous, thin, and fragile. And that fragility is why, for someone with this condition, something as simple as a fall can suddenly become a devastating fracture. So all this leaves us with a final thought. Final question for you. Your body is not a static bag of bones. It is a dynamic, living machine that is constantly responding to how you use it. You are its chief architect. So the question is, what will you do to maintain your architecture for a lifetime of action? Thanks for joining me on The Explainer.